I'm Todd, and this is my 1985 Chevy C10. Same year I was born. Huh? Fun fact. Is it still available? <laughs> guys up to speed because you probably see it in every episode but you never see me working on it it's because I don't like it <laughs> it's the truth I bought this thing I think it was three years ago for 800 bucks it has a crate motor in it it was in it when I bought it I have done extensive work to this my intentions with this was to do a little beautification kind of just make it look nicer and resell it and here I am full blown redid the frame redid the suspension redid the whole body redid the engine pulled the tr engine and transmission redid those new seals I just I went a little way overboard my guesstimation right now is I'm in this somewhere between six to eight thousand dollars at the moment I want to finish this thing and I had certain plans, and some of those plans have changed. Nothing serious, nothing serious. Okay, so one thing I was gonna do, I was gonna cut a hole inside the bed. There's a fuel tank on both sides. I was gonna cut a hole in the side of the bed, put the fuel door. I have the original bedsides over there. I was gonna weld it in, do the body work. The more I thought about it, I'm like, you know, this would be so much easier if I just pull that fuel tank. This fuel tank is probably the original fuel tank along with this one that's sitting over here. And that one started leaking at the seam. So what, how long is this one gonna last? I put a brand new fuel tank on the driver's side. There's a fuel door and everything. I can put fuel in it. I'm gonna remove the switch in the dash to put a USB plug in. We're gonna remove the passenger fuel tank so I don't have to do all that body work. That's a lot easier to pull the fuel tank. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I need to redo some things that I originally did. My wiring is kind of a hack job, okay? I have little butt connectors, splice connectors. The grill goes into these. See these, uh, all these splice connectors I got here and all this stuff. There's some on the inside. I got a Deutsch connector kits. I'm gonna redo all this wiring. That, I know, would be boring, but I wanna redo that. I want it to look nice, I want it to be a simple plug-in, and that way it's not a hack job. I did the same thing with the tail lights. Now, I custom made these tail lights, and there's LED trailer lights inside here, as you can see. And all I did was cut them down to fit the circuit board in there. The circuit board is hot glued into the tail light and then I wired it in. Now the wiring, like I said, hack job. I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna make that official. I got a backup camera that's hanging there. It's hooked up. I never finished it. I need to do that and it needs to be wired into the back reverse signal. I haven't done that. Body work, lots and lots of body work to be done on this. And the body work that I'm dreading that I need to do is I need to redo this rocker. I screwed up. You guys told me I did. I did it anyways, and here we are. I did this rocker and cap corner, which I had to do extensive work on. The other side I only had to take and replace a small piece, so everything lines up over there. This one, I redid the cap corner and the whole rocker. Well, this rocker doesn't line up doesn't line up at all so no gap yeah and chip right here so I gotta I'm gonna have to repaint anyways but if you look at this you see how this this hangs out if I cut this and pull this out it's gonna fix my problem here but then we also have this problem. 
where I did the cab corner, this needs to be knocked in and redone so that we have an even gap the whole way down. This looks like crap. As much money as I have in this thing, I need to make sure that I make this thing look like it's worth as much as I have in it, if not more. So that's why we're redoing some things. If I would have kept this to my original intentions, it was going to be a five to six thousand dollar truck to sell. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm I was guessing. I was going to have maybe two or three in it, five or six to sell. That's a good spot. Right now, I'm not sitting in a good spot. I redid everything though. That's the thing. I need to make it look like the amount of time that I have put into this thing. So that means I need to put a lot more time into it. And I know you guys have been looking forward to it. I've been dreading it. I honestly don't like working on this thing. I do not. But it needs to be done. So that's what we're doing on this episode. We're starting on it again. It runs good. That's a plus. And the fact that it fired up. Now I had an antifreeze leak. That was a simple tighten the clamp up. That's good. I like those kind of fixes. So I already fixed that off camera. But yeah, I was a little worried when I got out there. Well, I noticed this. I just ran it the other day and I was like, I don't remember that. Then I looked under the hood and I was like, oh, it kind of looks like it's leaking. It was the hose clamp from the, uh, the overflow that goes to the overflow tank, the one right at the, yeah, right at the radiator. It was, it was loose and it was leaking there. So we fixed that already. But yeah, she runs good, fans are running. Let's check the temperature. Now, I, I have another issue with this thing that we need to address and I have not honestly figured it out yet. I have an electrical issue. When I got it, it had this issue. Then after I put the motor back in and plugged everything back in, the issue was gone and it has since come back. I have a weak connection somewhere or something. So my oil pressure is reading right. My temperature is reading right. My battery voltage reads sometimes, doesn't read sometimes, and then my choke light stays on. Now, when I put it back together the first time, this was reading accurate, and this went out. So, somewhere along the lines, I have a weak connection. I'm thinking it's the one on the firewall up there. I'll figure it out. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, I have lots of stuff here, things I need to do, upgrade, the alternator, I need to get uh, a more powerful alternator because when I put the, the lights on on this, it's not charging enough. I'm getting like 12 volts charging. That's not good. When I turn them off, I'm getting like 13. So, we got that. I have a custom fuse panel, like distribution block, I want to put up under the dash somewhere. I have lights I want to put in here. I also have a like a USB thing that also reads the battery voltage so we kind of like offset that one but I want to put that up here where the fuel switch is because I'm going to do away with this since I'm taking one of the fuel tanks out there's no sense in having that switch in there because you're just going to turn your fuel off no good she runs like a top boys <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm also on the fence about these seats I, I, I thought about these I got these at Johnny's they were really crappy and cleaned them up. Now they look pretty good, but like it's really war right here. It, they sit up really high. I've been looking around, there's cheap options out there. I'm thinking about buying another set of seats to put in this thing. Still silver auto seats, just different. Buckets. You think buckets would be better? Buckets with a center console? Being that I'm making it like a sport truck? Yeah, <laughs> enough of me talking. Get this thing in the garage, which I gotta clean up the garage real quick, and then uh, we'll start by getting the thing on the lift. Because I think the fuel tank's gonna be the first thing to go.
All right, guys, you want to see something neat I did? I really like my lift lights I put up. Look at this thing. It plugs into the 110 back there. And then you just plug it in, plug the lights into it. Check this out. Yeah, I don't have to go back in that corner to plug them in. Just hit that. And, and <laughs> pretty nifty. It was only like 15 bucks, 16 bucks. Heck yeah. I want to show you this. Look, the pill Nazi's back. She's going to feed me like a bird. Get me your water there. Don't yell at already just because I was going to drink the wrong water. Try to. What? What do you mean? Don't drop them on the ground. <laughs> Go. <clears throat> Here's a big one. Oh, that's my job. One more. Then you got a little one. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I had to get that one down. Yep. Like get off. <laughs> there you go. At least I know I won't ever have to go to a home. <laughs> I have a nurse to take care of me. Now, before I put this thing up on the lift, so we can look underneath to see how bad this fuel tank's going to be, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Uh, I got a review! At the tone, please record your message. Now you're probably asking yourself, Todd, how are we going to use a scan tool in the C10? Well, I'm not. You can't. It's, it's before OBD. You're not going to do that. Secondly, you're going to say, Todd, you've already reviewed the Odo Fix. And this is identical. But that was the D1 Lite. This is the D1. Now, from what I'm seeing online, the only difference from the D1 Lite to the D1 is this one has the ability to do some coding so like if you're an Audi Volkswagen guy I don't know what other companies do that but you do coding where you can customize your vehicle change like say lights on it blinkers you can do different things with it this one can do that besides that I think this one has more service features so in the name of science, I'm just going to go grab the other one and we're just going to put it side by side. Listen guys, I tried to work on them to get the pro version, but uh, it's going to be a little bit more persuading. They didn't have any in stock, I guess, so I couldn't get that one. But I, I can tell you, this D1 Lite, actually when we went to our Gatlinburg vacation, this is the one I took because it is so small and compact. And it's nice. Now, if you look at these, uh, it looks, they're identical. I'm telling you. They contacted me while I was on vacation about me doing a review on this. And I'm like, I've already done a review on this. And I tried to get the pro version. And that's when they said, how about we do the D1? Okay. So I actually had this with me when I was on vacation. And I was like, they reached out to me. I'm like, so... They, they um, hardware wise, they, they are identical. They have the same processor, uh, same features. Okay, so you got more on here. What do you got? Maxi Video HD. It might just be a new software on here. I don't know. This thing, you there's Maxi Tool. So there's things you can get for this that work with this, like a, uh, an endoscope, like a camera, something like that. Um, let's go to the service features and see what all is in these, okay? So, we're going to start off identical here. This is the D1. This is the D1 Lite. Identical still. Okay, now, this is where this one stops. This one has uh, one more thing on it, the camshaft learning. The coding is a big thing for the difference on these two, but 
the for the size of it, when I went on vacation, I just threw that in my bag I, with that. So you see how small this is? Like it's a seven inch tablet, but it's not like okay. Let me show you the this is my favorite one, the the D8 uh, X tool. Now look how much bigger this thing is compared to this. So it's very portable. Like you can fit that in your glove box. Okay. It's nice to have around, and it does a lot of things. If you know that thing does a bit. There's a little bit of a price difference between the two, but they're fairly close. You also get two years of free updates. And after that, the price is way less than any of my other scanners. I'm pretty sure this was the cheapest to update per year. Let me check that out. So yes, it's way cheaper than any of my other scanners. A year membership once this runs out, so you can continue to update your systems. Now. Me personally, I'd probably like wait a year and then do it because it, it's going to update then. But it's one thirty nine, one hundred and thirty nine dollars. I think that one I think is like three hundred. Another one I have is like two ninety nine, two hundred something like that. One thirty nine. That's really, <laughs> really good for a system update. But this one, I don't even remember when I got it, but it's still doing updates, so it's not out yet. I can I mean, I'll figure it out. Oh, that's another thing I, I didn't mention on these. These actually use Autel software, okay? So Autel scanners, whatever. These are a fraction of the cost of them, and uh, they use their software. So it's the same stuff. See, they actually have Autel User Center. So I'm still good until September 22nd, 2025 on this one. And that's the, that's the D1 Lite. And a renewal one here says it's 119 which is even cheaper. Okay, so the D1 Lite's 119. This one says 219, but I found it online for cheaper. I'm just saying, the renewal, you can get one for 139. Now these are really easy to update. When you hook them up to your Wi-Fi, it's connected to the internet. So I just hit update, and it'll bring up manufacturers on here. Now my recommendation when you're updating these, do not update every manufacturer. These are nice scanners, but they are limited on space, how much they have. I think it showed this one has 50 gigabytes to get all together. There's 16 gigabytes left of available memory. So if I would go through and update every manufacturer on here, you're going to run out of space on these eventually. So I only update the common ones. So, like, I'm not even going to update BMW because you haven't seen one of those in my shop, maybe a Mini. But that's that's about it. All you do is click on the one. Now it tells you if there's new ones on here. I updated this just recently. So I think most of the stuff that I would need updated is already updated. Just bear with me, kids. I got I got reviews on all these videos. Alright. Let's hook this up. Alright, so just like on some of the other ones I have that are, are higher dollar, this also has a flashlight built into this thing so look up in here where are we where are we there it is ta-da there it is it's just saying the right way there you go I will tell you I, I do expect a couple codes like I said I had that crash avoidance sensor thing which never came back but and then the rain sensor thing which hasn't come it came back when it rained plus this thing doesn't have tire pressure sensors in the wheels, but it doesn't give me a light on the dash, so I don't know about that. All right, so I fat fingered this thing last time. It, it automatically brought up the everything, but now I gotta redo it, so auto detect. Laxis, only show ones. Get rid of that. All right. Automatically read my VIN. Sometimes, like on some vehicles, you have to hit read. This thing automatically came up already. So what I'm going to do is a full system scan on this. I'm not going to let put you through this, how long it takes. Uh, I'll just tell you if it took a long time or not. And then we'll go from there. 
URGSE. That is a glorious motor. Glorious. All right, so I just started the auto scan now. So it's going to run through every module, which I'm sure this thing has a ton of modules. All right, so I got an engine fault, a combination meter, two of those, six air conditioning faults, uh, three navigation faults, active wing, I got one fault, blind spot monitoring, I got one, uh, intuitive parking assist, there's two, and advanced parking guidance, I got two. This <laughs> is a little overwhelming. <laughs> Let's, I want to check, the engine one is one I'm concerned with, let's check that one. So, I have one for startability fault, that's a history code, not current not concerned a lot of these i bet are probably going to be like a low battery which would have been a non-startability thing so let's go to whatever this combination meter thing is trouble codes turn signal circuit open history Lost connection with Gigabyte Video Interface. All of these are history codes that sh the dealership, I would have thought, would have cleared out. Air conditioner. I'm going to say these are probably... I bet you this thing had a dead battery, and they put a new battery in and left all of these codes. That's just my guess. All of these are history uh, air damper control, inlet damper control, outlet damper, con cooling, cooling control, driver, passenger. Yeah, all of this stuff is probably has to do with the batteries is all. So let me go through this. If I find any, like, current codes, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I'm not concerned with it. Everything is just lost connection. So I'm going to do a quick erase. Go down through and get rid of everything on here. Because it needs it. Nothing should come back. That's what I'm talking about. So let's see. Healthy? Oh, she healthy. description there's gonna be a discount code down there grab one of these d1 or the d1 light because they're both very good if you're not doing coding i'd probably go with the d1 light for the price difference and stuff if you're doing stuff like me i think it will get you by it'll do everything you need to do you do a little bit more extensive work maybe you have a garage maybe think about the bigger one the max i think it's the max D1, maybe it's not a D1, I can't remember. I want it, I'm hope they're gonna send it to me, I'm telling you, I'm gonna, they're, I'm gonna, they're gonna like this review and they're gonna be like, send him that. Actually, the, the kid that I bought this off of goes to the gym that I go to and I was, this morning I told him I was starting to work on it again and I told him I was pulling this fuel tank and he said, pretty sure the passenger fuel tank was, was new, like he had to replace. So, yeah. Okay, so it is new. Maybe I'll maybe I'll list it online for sale. I don't know, but we're not using it, so it's gonna save me lots of body work. So let's get it. Let's get this thing up. All right. So I had to situate my lift in a weird way. So I had to put it on the spring mount and as far up on the frame as I could get up there. This one's a little further forward. I wish that this one was too, but that's all the further my arm could extend. I did do the wiggle test. I put my weight on the front end and it's not falling off. So that's at least good. So, Cause I don't know how much this tank weighs, but I know that this is gonna look a lot better because when you looked at this side, look how much that sticks down. Now, I don't know if that's just a plastic cover. Actually, I don't know that. Uh, the tanks, it's just a plastic cover that sticks down like that. And I don't like that. 
just doesn't and it never looked good and then you see my paint and primer and all that stuff on there it just doesn't look good so that's it's gonna look better on this side man you don't notice the runs i put on that rocker until you get down here that's nice anyways as you can see this side was already done all new new straps all of that and other news i just want to update you guys uh, i know i posted it online and i said in a video that johnny's is no longer they made a post that they were closing they have since retracted that and that post is gone now and i got word from another salvage yard that actually reached out to me I've gotten a lot of parts from uh tyrone auto salvage in the past and one time years ago I mean, it was probably seven years ago uh one of the yard guys there helped me we went out in the yard looked for parts he pulled the parts for me and everything that guy's now running it and he contacted me he said are you the one that does youtube i remember you blah 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 so you might see some more of their stuff because he's gonna hook me up basically but he also told me when i was talking to him because i said it was sad about johnny's he said johnny's isn't closing it's gonna take him a while to build back up but johnny's is not going under so that's good i'm excited about that so whenever i hear news that it's back up and running or that it's maybe we'll just take a run up there sometime but yeah johnny's is not going away so that video i made it was a little emotional but let's retract that There she is, boys. So now we have some cleaning up to do. And by cleaning up, I mean we have some wiring to do away with, lines to do away with, and I did all this and didn't take that cover off, and now I, I have to take the cover off. <laughs> it looks like it's fairly easy. These bolts are self-tapped into the frame to take that cover off, so I'll just run those out. But you can see, look, it's a little cruddy in here. Um, while I have this out, now I already did the other side, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So what I'm going to do is we're going to clean all this up. And you can see there is some, uh, you know, some good rust back in here on these inner panels. But what we're going to do is after we get this all cleaned up, I'm going to go through here with some seam sealer and get all these seams back here after I after I wire wheel all this and stuff, which isn't gonna happen on this episode, unfortunately. We're gonna get rid of all these fuel lines and stuff, all this extra stuff from this tank. There's a switch, I believe it's up in here, that uh, switches from one tank to the other. I don't know if I'm just gonna plug one side of it or if I'm gonna just do away with it all together. Um, I gotta see what I'm working with once I get up in there, but let me get all these bolts out of this cover and then uh, we'll see what's up in here and I do eventually need to take this exhaust back off So I was up here. I, I re-welded there's patches on these bedsides and I re-welded them and it bubbled the paint Well, somebody skim coated this whole bed uh, to, to work these in and uh, The putty was coming off so I went ahead and cleaned that off I'm gonna have to take this down to bare metal rebody work all this right here as you can see there's a bubble right there so when i welded it it 
mess the body work up. But we also have it back here. You can see how the skim coat is right here at this. Um, I think there's supports that go back here and I don't have them. I don't think I ever did. But don't, you don't really need them. But yeah, that's what we're working with. So, all right, let's get that cover off and see what it looks like under there. Might have to take this exhaust off, but I don't know yet. Alright, so this is the tank switching valve right here. It also controls um, your fuel level sender, which is ones right here. Which I'm just going to chop that one off, I believe. Or maybe I'll just tie it up in there. Uh, there's another wire off of that. Let me find it. It was already been chopped several times right here. I don't know where that one goes. Uh, it's just a ground. It's just a ground strap, so I'll just go ahead and chop that off. No big deal. Um, I went ahead and plugged, took the lines out, and plugged the uh, valve right here. We're just going to leave it the way it is. I'm leaving it in here. Um, I could, you know, put new lines in here and stuff. I'm just, it's fine. I, this is the vent from the tank. Uh, it ran a split and went to the other one. I uh, ordered a, a vent valve for this just to plug in here so it's not just open so critters can crawl in and stuff. Anyways, this is all I could squeeze in for one day. That's going to be the end of this video. I know it was short. I didn't get a lot of work done, but we got some things done, okay? And I did a couple things off camera. I adjusted the fender over there. I, I mounted the inner fenders a little bit more solid. It was just stuff like small stuff. I you know, I still got to do a lot of things to this. And I just, I'm baby steps, okay? Baby steps. But the thing is, we started it, okay? So we're on our way. I I am kind of looking at the auction a little bit, but I'm not going to push this aside. I, I'm going to need a beater eventually. If I get it, I'm going to put it somewhere. We're going to continue on this because I really don't want this in the garage anymore. To tell you the truth, I would like to sell it. And that's where I'm at. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom likes to say less and do more. And we'll see you in the next episode of All Right. you just eat? Huh? Oh, I can't put your head. You got flea medicine on. I forgot. Here, I can do this. That okay? The boy was creeping up on me. What are you doing? I can't pet your head. Right, so... You don't let me pet you anywhere else. Come back. What are you doing, Goofy? Hmm? He wanted my beef jerky I had a second ago. Ooh. Yeah. He thought it was his. Yeah. What do you see? How you doing, you man? Yeah. yeah. I can't pet your head. You got flea medicine on. Are you sorry? <laughs> and oh, you said that's okay. Pet my yeah. Scratch my butt. Yeah. Nope. Nope. That's enough.